Hi everyone, um, it's Dr. J again. Um, I want to talk to you about the uh, shoulder joint. That's what this video is going to be on, just the shoulder. And then we're going to do the hip, and then we're going to do the knee, which is very big. Okay, so um, let's just talk about the shoulder right now. Well, the shoulder is actually called the glenohumeral joint. That's what they call it, the glenohumeral joint. And um, it consists of about 10 muscles going around it and about nine ligaments that are going uh, that are connecting it remember ligaments connect bone to bone and when we talk about uh, muscles uh, then we talk about tendons that connect the muscles to the bone so um, I would need you to get some kind of a diagram in front of you so that you can see what I'm talking about I will show you this these slides because I really have it's really a very visual thing it's very visual because a lot of the ligaments are, have the name of where it originates and where it inserts based on the name. So, in other words, if you get a word like, uh, 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 like um, coracochromial ligament, then it's going to be first connecting to the coraco uh, joint of the, of, the, uh, of the bone and then connecting to the acromial end. So, uh, so the acromial clavicular ligament is going from the acromial uh, uh, part of the scapula to the clavicular uh, area of your bone. So there's a lot going on. So I need you to remember that alone. That, that, that's a concept. By just remembering the first word, you'll know where it begins and you'll know where it ends. And a lot of it has a little bit of um, continuity to it, like coracoacromial ligament. Coracoclavicular ligament, coracohumoral, because it connects to the humerus, humoral ligament. And then you have a, a chromial clavicular ligament, and a glenohumoral ligament, and a transhumoral ligament. So um, that's just six of them. There's actually 10 of them. So you have a trapezoid ligament, a, a, corac uh, a, cor a coracoid ligament. Uh, an inferior transverse scapular ligament, a sub, sub transverse scapular ligament. So please understand what we're doing here, okay? Please understand what we're doing here. This is, this, is a, this is a system of understanding it. So you have 10 ligaments. You have nine muscles. The muscles involved in the shoulder are the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the deltoid, the lavator scapulae, the pectoralis minor, pectoralis minor, teres major, teres minor, the rhomboids major, and the rhomboids minor. So you have nine muscles that are stabilizing this, this, um, this shoulder. And uh, within the shoulder itself, you have bursa. I don't know if you know what bursa is, but Bursa are like little pillows of fluid that cushion. It's almost like a sponge in between the joint that's causing it to just cushion itself, almost like shocks on a car. Uh, you know how the shock, how it bounces? When you hit a bump, the, 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 the car kind of bounces so you don't feel the, 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 uh, the vibration and the tension of that, uh, of, of that, of that uh, uh, fall or that, or that um, joint movement. So subscapularis, subcoraco, co, uh, subcoracoid, subdeltoid, subacromial. These are bursa. These are pillows that are between these joints that actually help in the vibration and the pressure of the movement, so that you don't feel. Uh, it's almost like a. It, it's almost like a. Um, not only is it a shock, but it's also like a pillow that kind of vi kind of absorbs the. Uh, the um, the movement so that you don't uh, feel it as much and the shoulders are so uh, vulnerable to injury that um, we kind of have to have all of this around uh, to uh, help us with our consistent movement our consistent uh, uh, abuse of the shoulders and um, these are some these are some uh, slides that I want you to look at now in the scapula bone. Uh, the scapula bone. See, this is the scapula bone. 
This is the humerus. Now, the, the bones of the, of the shoulder are the humerus, the clavicular bone, and the scapula, which is in the back. Now, the scapula comes to the front. It actually extends out, and it creates this shoulder girdle. And where the, uh, the glenoid, the humoral head, and the scapula meet, and remember, they never meet like they never meet together. There's always uh, a separation. Remember, between bones, there's always going to be synovial fluid, cartilage, right? Synovial fluid, cartilage, and bursa, always, because you have to have this liquid oil to movement. And you got to have the, the 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 muscles and ligaments around it to keep it stable. So. At the point of articulation, right before they actually touch, there's something on the scapula called the glenoid cavity. It's not, it's not really something that grips the humerus like this. It's more like this. So it just kind of rotates like that. So the humerus can actually go in any direction it wants. It can go up like this. It can go down like this. It can go to the side. You understand that? Because if it was like this, it would be limited to what it can do. So it opens up like this so that the cavity can actually just be a base for it without it actually uh, uh, restricting it from its movement. And that glenoid cavity um, has a, uh, a glenoid sheath around it. So uh, by you understanding that, the glenoid labrium, it's almost like a washer that goes around the, the, uh, the, the glenoid cavity and it keeps, it, it kind of keeps it stable. A little bit. A lot of people rip that. It's the glenoid. Uh, the glenoid um, uh, uh, labrum gets ripped, and that takes a long time. Remember, these ligaments and these tendons uh, and the labrum, they don't have too much blood supply, so you can't really get a good healing process going. It takes a very long time. A lot of heat, a lot of cold, a lot of pills, anti-inflammatories, and uh, um, you know, and and and, and therapy. Uh, it takes a very long time. Some people don't even want to wait. They just go right to surgery with it, and uh, hopefully that will work. So um, with all that's going on here, we talk about these ligaments. They are, they are multiple. I need you to look at all of these ligaments. Make sure you identify them and see where they're at. This, uh, this particular um, uh, overhead will show you some of them, uh, like the glenohumoral ligament. The glenohumoral ligament, right there. It shows it to you where it's at. It keeps it. It keeps stable uh, stabilization. It keeps it from moving. And remember, bone to bone. So we need to understand that and get and get that understood. Now the rotator cuff. That's you know you've heard of the rotator cuff, right? Well, there's four rotator cuff tendons. Well, that means that it's going to be connecting to a muscle. So you have the subscapularis, subscapularis. The sub, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. These are muscles, but they are actually tendons that connect to it. So understand that the subscapularis, the subspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor are the rotator cuff muscles that are directly involved in the stability of the joint. Okay, the stabilizers, as they call them, the stabilizers. There's a lot of other help, like the deltoid muscle, that big hat that goes over it, that's a big stabilizer also. So as we keep talking about it, um, the, uh, as we keep looking uh, at, the, um, at the different um, uh, uh, um, shoulder muscles, just remember that uh, even though I'm talking about the muscles here, the deltoids, that big muscle on top, it's the gigantic muscle that's, that keeps it on top, which gives you most of the primary uh, um, uh, movement. Uh, people that hurt their deltoid muscle, they're, they're, they're very uh, hampered with movement. They can't move very well. But I need you to look at all of these muscles. Remember, there's nine muscles, there's 10 ligaments, there's four bursa. I need you to remember all of that. Identify all of that, okay? Because we're all about the, about the shoulder. We're going to go to the hip. We're going to go to the knee. These are important parts of our body that have the most pressure and the most activity. Now remember, the shoulder has the most diverse movement of any 
any joint in our bodies. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. Understand the bursa, what they are, they're pillows. Understand the muscle, they have to do with tendons. And understand the ligaments, will have to do with the connection of bone to bone. And these are the these are the 10 ligaments. Don't forget them. Identify them. Draw them out. No, understand them. Remember, the first word is where they originate from. The second word is where they insert. So this is where it begins. This is where it ends. Okay? So keep that in mind. We're going to be talking about other, other bones of the body. And the shoulder girdle is an amazing place to be. So try to understand it because when you get older in life and you're in your occupational therapy, or if you're in physical therapy, uh, osteopathic medicine, whatever the case might be, you're going to need to know all of this stuff. And remember, the surgery is very difficult because look at all of these. Look at all of these ligaments. Look at all of these ligaments. I mean, if you're tearing a shoulder, if you tear your shoulder or ligaments, where is it? They have to do an MRI of this. They have to identify it, and it becomes a very tedious um, uh, surgery, and a lot of them don't work. There's always going to be pain even after surgery. So um, uh, my first, uh, uh, unless you are a professional athlete, uh, don't do surgery if you can help it. Try to get this fixed normally by treating it uh, 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 through heat, and uh, maybe injections from your doctor to inject into your into your joints so that it can relieve some of the inflammation and the pain. Um, and you can try to feel it yourself, but remember, it's long term. I'm talking about a year to two years of healing because why? Very low blood supply, very avascular. Whereas the muscles, very vascular. Muscles can heal, tendons can't. Tendons are avascular just like ligaments are. So if you tear a, t if you tear a tendon, you, you know, you'll have the same problem. And you know, um, surgery is an option, always an option. Just remember that. Uh, so the, like I say, the shoulder of the rotator cuff, it's called the glenohumeral joint. That is the shoulder joint, the glenohumeral joint. Okay, so um, we'll go on to the next video. Uh, hopefully this helped a little bit. Uh, I didn't get too extensive. Remember, you have to read. Whenever I speak, I'm not an encyclopedia. You have to read. You got to fill in the blanks here. Make sure you understand everything. Make sure you understand movement. Make sure you understand each one of these muscles and what they actually move, what they actually do. Uh, the ligaments. You well, you can see the ligaments. You can see where they where they go from the caraco. Humoral, the caracoclavicular, the caracoacromial, the acromial clavicular, <laughs> the acromial clavicular, the, ge the glenohumoral, the transhumoral. So you understand that these are wrapping around the shoulder like a package, like a Christmas package, all around it so that they can stabilize this, this shoulder. And a lot of people have problems. Remember, arthritis is one of the culprits of this. Um, uh, uh, so uh, just try to understand that as you get older in life, uh, if you are heavy with your articulations and your shoulder all the time, you're a wrestler or you're a construction worker, these shoulders start to tend, tend to weaken. And you get obviously weaker, weaker muscles and weaker ligaments and the bursa. Remember when bursa gets infected, it's called uh, bursitis. And I've all you've all heard of that before. So um, you know, taking anti-inflammatories and trying to fix this in your own way, uh, getting advice from doctors, or you can always go on the on the internet and find out how to treat it properly. Okay. So um, remember all of these nine muscles, ten ligaments, four bursa in the shoulder, the most of any joint in the body. Amazing, the world of the shoulder. People make a living off of that all by itself. I'll see you in the next video.